Thank you for joining us this afternoon, Stephanie, and uh, we're very pleased to have you on this series. Well, our very first question to you, uh, tell us about yourself. What do you do and what does your organization do for older people? So thank you for having me. And I'm Stephanie Law, Managing Director of Culture Homes and Board Living. Um, so I basically joined um, elder care um, 14 years ago. Um, it is a family business. So our company, Culture Homes, uh, was established uh, in Hong Kong um, by our chairman, Dr. Alexander Law, in 2001. And he's an architect uh, with the passion um, to look into uh, elder care um, uh, in their living environment and to also weave in hospitality. So, uh, so he started with uh, residential care homes as his first step. But after 20 years of development, uh, today, uh, after I joined, uh, we not only operate uh, care homes, but we are also operating 10 retail shops in different parts of Hong Kong, uh, providing uh, lifestyle and rehabilitation products, um, and also home modifications that supports uh, elders and their carers. So our product range could be um, anything from consumables, uh, care food, uh, smart wheelchairs, to even care furniture. So um, I'm very pleased uh, to be joining today. And um, as a managing director who steers the um, vision um, and trends um, in elder care for the company, I would also uh, go to different expos, uh, conferences, study tours, and actually I've joined a few of them with Asian Asia in the past, and I was really grateful for that. And it has uh, widened up my vision um, as a, a leader um, in an elderly care uh, company. Um, so what we are doing is to bring in um, ideas and brands and products that could be identified with modern uh, golden ages um, in Hong Kong. And of course, um, we try to bring them to Hong Kong as many as possible. Yeah. How has the landscape in Hong Kong evolved since you entered the sector? I think um, since uh, when I was joining 14 years ago, I uh, do not see a lot of um, brands or uh, companies uh, that are, um, you know, that could be identified as a uh, uh, aging brand. But uh, after, you know, so many years and after COVID, I think there's a consolidation of uh, what uh, elder care could be uh, for uh, the, the golden ages and baby boomers, of course, because um, this year, Hong Kong, we have just entered into a uh, super aging society where 20% um, uh, of our uh, elder population is uh, over 65 years of age. Mm -hmm. So I think it is a big market. It's uh, still uh, very brand new in Hong Kong, but um, I see that there are more of uh, uh, you know, new services and uh, new home um, residential care are coming along as well. Um, so I think it's important for us to look into the future, um, you know, from today, um, as you know, aging is a long process, and it, it's also impacting the society in different ways. Brilliant. So let's talk a bit about care leadership in what it means to you personally? Um, I think care leadership uh, essentially means, you know, fostering a positive care culture. Um, it's uh, very core to care leadership. So being able to look and move beyond the status quo um, is very important. Um, we have to keep asking ourselves every day um, because uh, it's, it's a, um, industry of you know caring it's very personal and um we should you know look at the current model and question ourselves if uh whether the current uh consumer experience suffice can we be more personal um and after all um, care is very personal so i think we need to see the person beyond care and i think that a good leadership is to see the person's potential um, and to be able to deliver everyday essentials that are important to them. By this, I mean empowering them to enjoy every moment in life. So this applies to residents uh, who entrusted us, uh, uh, you know, 
to our services, but also our own employees, um, because it is a never ending process and we have to strive to improve. Yeah. So there are so many things that we can learn from each other uh, through our everyday uh, communications within the community. And how about when you have new staff that's joining you, and especially somebody who's not worked in the care sector before, someone completely new, or even someone new to how you are delivering the care differently at culture homes. What's your advice for new employees who join you? I think um, orientation is very important. Um, when we do um, onboarding, um, and even at interviews, uh, we ask them, why would you like to join, you know, elder care industry? So we make sure that uh, we have a aligned uh, view of um, how many possibilities uh, there could be in the future, because um, it's not just care. It's about personal growth um, for the residents and also um, staff members themselves. So I think um, it is important to set, uh, you know, uh, expectations for each other that uh, we are very uh, forward looking. Uh, we use a lot of technologies. Uh, we have a very young team um, and also um, it's very dynamic. So uh, nursing staff not only takes care of the elders, but they're also, you know, taking part in a lot of different activities because we want them to know the person um, just uh, not beyond all the, you know, nursing care. Um, it's important to build uh, bonding and lasting relationships uh, within the community. Mm, definitely. Well, in, in your role, I'm sure you've come across many interesting stories in those 14 years, um, you know, and many seniors have benefited from your services. There must be more than one, but I'm sure you have a favorite. Can you share with us a story of how one of the elders' life has improved um, since being under the care of Culture Home? So I have a uh, gentleman in mind. Um, he's uh, 84. He's one of the earliest uh, residents of our senior community for living. Um, so he came to us not because he was frail or he was um, uh, not well. He was actually very active, um, but uh, he lost uh, his wife. Um, uh, and uh, he was living alone, so he felt very lonely and uh, he was in solitude because uh, he was living at a walk up and uh, his mobility, he was uh, using a walking cane. So, um, so when he moved in, he wanted to have, you know, uh, good, uh, good meals, um, good companions, um, and also uh, be able to stay uh, as active as possible. So um, he really impressed me because he uh, he was a very good. He was very good at computers. He still uh, trades stocks every day. Um, he also listens to uh, Spotify. Um, so he taught me a lot, actually. Um, and uh, we then introduced him to many, uh, you know, social networks. Uh, within our community and even um, the university next to us, uh, there there was um, uh, elderly academy there. So he was able to go to school uh, after mm. he came to join us at our community. So I was really happy for him and he made uh, new friends. And also uh, he was a com uh, he is a committee member of our Fort Living Meals Committee. So he would taste the food that uh, you know, that's uh, that's going to be presented uh, in the next month and he would give us feedback and he is really good at it. So uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and he had told us that there are many things uh, he has learned uh, since he uh, joined us and he also takes care of others. So but he at the same time, he could also remain as himself. Mm -hmm. So as he told others that uh, not only as before, but now he could achieve even more at the community. So I think he has really changed a lot since he lived with us. Well, that's a fantastic story. And it's so nice to see that his, his life has, um, uh, you know, benefited from more diverse opportunities and more engagement and learning of new things. And we're all learning every day. And I think that's the fun thing about life and having a community that sure. facilitates that is very important for older people. 
I think that comes to the next point that we want to talk about, which is quality of life for for residents. You know, how important is is it for for you to be able to deliver this, and what are the challenges? So uh, when we talk about quality of life at a care home, uh, we always talk about happiness. Um, that's uh, what defines, you know, whether your service is good or not. And um, for me, um, when we could, you know, spend more quality time with our residents and also uh, to make them feel at home uh, is really important. Um, so, um, I think how we create an environment that is um, enabling them to be as independent as possible, has their own autonomy, um, it's very uh, good and uh, for their uh, self-growth. So this is what I look in when, it, it, when we're talking about uh, the quality of life. Um, it's also about you know, the unmet needs um, that uh, we identify as the uh, resident come into a new environment, a new entire new setting. We have to help them settle in. So uh, what we do is uh, we do a lot of uh, learning circles, meaning um, we uh, invite our residents to sit together with our team members uh, and sometimes even um, you know uh, their families to understand really what's their um, their purpose of or their uh, their visions of joining uh, you know our, our care home um, as a resident. So sometimes they would tell us uh, their personal stories and uh, what they would look forward to and what they like or don't like. It could be you know small things as uh, food or even mm -hmm. activities or some would tell us that they would rather stay in their uh, rooms and uh, not being dis be disturbed. Uh, so we will listen to everything, um, you know, at the very beginning and also get to know them. So we even ask them, um, how would you like us to call you instead of just uh, being, you know, uh, Mr. Chan, Mr. Lee, or, 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 or some sort of um, prefix name, uh, we would uh, make sure that our language uh, being used in our uh, community are also, uh, you know, uh, comfortable and um, personal to them. We we always know that um, working in the care sector is not easy, and there's a lot of um, targets and um, checkpoints to hit when you want to uh, look after older people, um, keeping them safe and keeping them secure. Um, you know, how how do you establish that? link between quality of life versus quality of care and being a care home i think people think you're supposed to look after the seniors and give them as much care as possible but what we were talking earlier is really about understanding that older person and surely in doing all this it takes more time um could the staff possibly be more stressed doing more of these conversations or do you think it actually helps the entire community. Tell us your views. Yes. So we do this on an everyday level. Um, we uh, we would you know sit together with our staff members and we would talk about you know uh, each resident um, you know not only their health conditions um, but also uh, you know what interests them or or some things up. Uh, we would do it on an every, everyday level. So everyone is uh, quite used to you know um, being transparent and open about uh, uh, talking talking about uh, different situations uh, that uh, happens in the community and I think um, of course like uh, we have a lot of rules and regulations to abide but um, as a um, care company I would say uh, like to promote you know uh, a quality of life um, in uh, elder care. I think um, care culture, again, is very important. So we do make sure that uh, everyone um, is aware of and, uh, and comfortable with, you know, um, being a part of the community. And, and as you said, uh, of course, there are, there are uh, 
uh, time that it's uh, risk adverse, or maybe for people living with dementia, uh, some places uh, would you know, restrict them on certain floors, uh, not letting them, you know, exit the floor. But for us, uh, we do open our community to all, you know, um, uh, residents, even if they are living with dementia. Uh, we just need to, you know, um, be their care partner. And um, we always say, um, you know, uh, we don't, we don't uh, label them as uh, wandering. We would say, uh, you're exploring. Uh, how about I explore with you? Uh, may I join you for the exploration? So we would, you know, exit the floor together. If they would like to, you know, take the elevator to other floors, uh, we would go with them. But uh, we're not like um, checking on them. I think uh, the thing is uh, to be with them uh, as their care partner, and uh, that makes them feel safe. And when they, you know, go to other floors, they felt like they've um, they've traveled somewhere um, and uh, it's also, you know, uh, good for them actually. Uh, yeah, uh, instead of, uh, you know, uh, restricting them. Mm. Did you do anything fun during COVID to make them feel that they were um, having a new experience? Tell us, tell us a, a fun innovation that you did during COVID-19. Um, during COVID-19, actually we, we did a lot of things. Um, so we worked with uh, the university next to us, the Lingnan University. So we invited them to come for a Nordic Christmas. Um, so it was a, um, you know, how um, in Nordic, uh, we have a lot of marketplaces. Um, so we did a marketplace, but how we did them is uh, we paired them up, uh, we paired the elders mm -hmm. up with the students to host the Nordic Christmas. So it was hosted by the students and the elders. So they had meetings prior to the event and, uh, you know, the performances, they were part of it and they worked really well with the students. So um, it came out pretty well and, and everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they, they hope that you continue doing it even post COVID. That sounds like a really fun activity to be part of. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> well, let, let's talk a bit about technology now because um, it appears that you have a lot of freedom for everyone to do activities around and I'm sure there are some technologies that you have utilized in some way to enable you to provide that care and quality of life for older people. Can you share some of the mm -hmm. implementations you have utilized and at the end of it maybe you can also share what are some technologies that you hope to see in future? Yes. So when we consider technology, um, so our project is uh, a little bit uh, special because uh, it was undergoing uh, planning for 13 years. So we were able to travel around the world to search for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, good solutions and technology for, for the home. And uh, so we, we were able to identify a uh, IoT enabled mobile app um, that links up all the medical devices uh, to record the residents' vital signs, um, their health records, um, their accounting records, uh, even communication. So everything was uh, on the app. And uh, so our data can be um, more accurate um, when they took the vital signs. And also, most importantly, is to save, uh, you know, the staff's time um, to do, you know, uh, manual records. Um, I think it's important also uh, to let our staff to spend more quality time to care for the elders um, mm -hmm. so that, uh, you know, this, these technologies could help them alleviate their work. There are also, of course, other um, technologies that we use, such as facial recognition, just like I, I, I just mentioned, uh, when, you know, residents, uh, you know, exit each floor, there is a facial recognition that uh, tells us uh, whether a an elder is exiting. So that's also important, uh, just as a safety measure. And also, there are a lot of different technologies, like um, we are using a um, her um, smart touch technology. It's from Finland. It's for you know uh, strength strength training equipment. So uh, the user just has to wear a wrist sensor, and it would help clients to maximize um, their workout time and their progress. 
so that trainers could uh, retrieve the records easily and uh, it could be used on multiple training devices. So um, we could, you know, utilize technologies in many different uh, creative ways. Um, and I think um, technology essentially at a care home is to help um, our, uh, our staff um, to be more efficient in their work so that they can spend more time with their elders. Mm -hmm. And for, uh, as for the future, um, of course, I would like to have a, uh, like a social media app for all our residents because uh, we have a big community. We, uh, if we have a full house, it's around 229 residents. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that uh, we could, you know, have a, a community that's very diverse, very dynamic, and people would, um, you know, just uh, go go on an app and have different uh, interest groups and chat groups, and they can form their different, you know, uh, little communities within our um, for a living. Mm, I think that would be great. Oh, that sounds, uh, you know, that's, that sounds interesting to have. And uh, there's so many possibilities for that. And, and of course, I think it's fun that they get start engaging in technology. Um, you know, let, let's talk a bit about also the, the tracking of um, using technology to track data and to track um, behavior or patterns. Um, have you used that before? And, um, you know, would you like to use it in the future? Uh, you mean tracking um, for like sensors or detections of yeah, faults? Yeah, like using using sensors to 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 see what is the uh, likelihood of faults, or using sensors to monitor um, how many times a person enters a certain area. Um, how often do you mm -hmm. analyze the various analytics in your community? Yes. So currently, we are still trialing. Um, uh, trial using some of the technologies because uh, for Hong Kong, there are a lot of um, uh, device that needs to uh, undergo some of the testing and uh, we still haven't found one that uh, being, could be localized in Hong Kong, mm. uh, like bed sensors and um, you know, sensors for monitoring. But we do think that uh, it is important and it is essential in the future because as we have uh, more residents and and also it's not easy to hire uh, uh, caregivers uh, this, these days, um, uh, these sort of um, sensors can help us to give privacy to our mm. uh, residents and also, you know, uh, track their sleeping pattern at the same time. Um, I think it's more important to learn about the sleeping patterns and the quality of sleep uh, for our residents because a lot of them you know do get up uh, during the middle of the night and we also want to be you know uh, as um, as accurate as possible and also uh, to reduce you know fall risk and for our community actually we also do not uh, promote you know the use of restraints so this could be something to consider in the future Great, great. Well, our last question, um, and we've so quickly come to the end of this uh, wonderful session. It's really about attracting and retaining talent in the sector. How do you do it? I think this is a very tough question, Janice, um, for anyone who's working in this industry. But um, when our founder, um, uh, Dr. Law, he, he told us that, uh, you know, think of uh, care uh, elder care as hospitality. Uh, you know, we don't bound ourselves um, in a certain way, a certain hierarchy. Let's, you know, refamp it. So uh, what we try to do is, uh, you know, fostering a positive care culture mm -hmm. from the start and um, from how it is perceived from the public to uh, those who is working uh, inside of the organization. I think this is very important. Um, and also we need to recognize long-term care as a profession. Um, because in Hong Kong, we are still a long way from it. Uh, many sees the industry as a second priority to the medical field due to, you know, the incentive, incentive care, giving culture, and also um, care work care workers are bound to stay in the same role with little advancement opportunities. Um, so we try to change this around. I would say mm -hmm. uh, right now, 
yeah, the average age of our staff is in their mid thirties. And um, we built our management structure similar to ho hotel ho uh, hospitality teams. So we de-institutionalize our positions. Everyone has their own profession, but they're also multitasking. Um, and we have new titles, uh, like uh, we no longer call our personal care worker as care mm. workers. We call them um, healthcare ambassadors. And mm. we also have uh, social teams. Um, social teams is uh, like uh, the fun team that goes around and uh, do all the, you know, activities and communications. And they really love that. It's like a, you know, like a community team that we have. And um, how we create uh, community programs together uh, with the university next to us. So when our people, um, they see that our community is open and it's, you know, um, there are so many elements, they feel excited to come to work. And even chefs um, and nurses are also part of, you know, our, um, are uh, who, part of who is leading the activities for elders. Sometimes our chefs would do workshops, uh, cooking workshops for them. And so we try to engage everyone so we do not leave anyone out. Mm -hmm. Well, it all sounds really fun. And I, and I think when people hear this conversation, hopefully we will inspire more of you out there to, to consider a different kind of care sector that you want to be part of to change the future. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Stephanie. Thank you, Janice. CarePage Business is the only feedback platform designed for the health and ageing sectors. With CarePage Business, you can uncover powerful customer experience insights, monitor resident or client feedback and complaints in a single, easy to use platform, and get the insights you need to drive continuous improvement in services and facilities. The CarePage Business Feedback Solution is designed to be accessible for your residents and clients. With large fonts and high contrast colours, surveys and feedback forms are designed for older audiences and individuals with cognitive or other impairments such as low vision. You can also offer surveys in a range of languages. CarePage Business Dashboards and Analytics have been designed with the sector in mind giving you clear oversight over one or multiple services. All feedback flows in real time into a cloud-based system where executives and managers can look at top-level reporting and delve into deeper analytics to look at feedback and complaints themes and identify areas for celebration or improvement. Free up your team's time managing and monitoring feedback so you can focus on delivering high-quality care and services. Get the complete feedback complaints and continuous improvement solution designed for the health and aging sectors.